Uh, Mr. President, I move that private members' business item number 889 be considered in a short form format. The question is out of the member. All those in favour say aye. Those against, no. The ayes have it. I move the motion. Continue on. Uh, Mr. President, there are a great deal of concerns with the new intercity fleet. The South Korean trains have been fraught with problems from the beginning. The Liberal and National Government disregarded New South Wales manufacturers. Instead, choosing to build trains offshore, sending both taxpayers' money and jobs overseas. They reward, rewarded an overseas tenderer, claiming they were cheaper than our local manufacturers. We have now seen the fleet's costs skyrocket by more than a billion dollars. The Berejiklian government's decision-making has led to problem after problem, empty promises, trains that were too wide for the tunnels and too long for the railway stations, a grave lack of appropriate consultation and a complete and utter failure to del deliver the trains on time. The most troubling issues are the significant safety concerns, especially the impact that this could have on our residents. The public has a right to know about these and how they are being addressed. 90 per cent of transport workers surveyed about the fleet said that they would not staff the fleet when it comes into service based on their safety concerns. The operating model of the South Korean trains was designed to be driver only, and now the Berejiklian government will remove guards from these train services. They have shifted some of their safety responsibilities onto the drivers, who are unable to undertake the much needed work that protects commuters and vulnerable community members. The government has proposed a new position with a lower classification called customer service guard, who are not permitted to perform any of the critical safety functions of train guards. The transport minister met with Martin Stewart, who was the 2018 Blind Australian of the Year, who lost his right arm and leg after he was dragged beneath a Melbourne train for 200 metres. The train did not have a guard to help him alert the driver when he fell. The transport minister stood next to Martin and publicly promised guards would be maintained in their current roles. On October 2018, he said, and I quote, I can assure Martin today and the people of New South Wales that under my watch, our new intercity trains will not be driver only as was being considered. Guards perform an important function on our railway, ensuring the safe op operation of the rail network. They also go above and beyond to assist less abled passengers to board and disembark our trains. The minister has now broken his promise as there will be no guards performing this work. Design flaws mean that there will be no guards standing at the crew cab door to assess the platform for fall risks or see people falling into the, crap, the tracks. Customer service guards will be locked in the crew cab without audio and won't be able to hear cries for help. There will be no mandated visual inspections of platforms, no hazard searches on trains. Passengers cannot seek assistance from a guard in emergencies, just a button directed to a remote call centre. Mr President, the order for papers is much needed as the fleet has been shrouded in secrecy. In fact, the Berejiklian government have been forcing stakeholders, including disability groups, into signing non-disclosure agreements. What is this government hiding? Preventing community groups and testing crews from speaking about serious safety concerns means the government is actively trying to deprive the public of essential information that they are entitled to. Under the Rail Safety National Law, the operator must consult with unions regarding the introduction or variation of a safety management system. Alarmingly, the government has failed to meet its obligations on this. In October, it was reported that the fleet is delayed yet again. The fleet was already delayed for more than one year. The government had falsely promised services would begin in late 2019. Here we are in 2020, and it appears it's likely to be delayed until 2021. We do not have enough information on the implication of the design flaws, safety issues, train delays, and blowouts in costs. The public has a right to know they should not be kept in the dark when it is their taxpayers' dollars that have been spent overseas on South Korean trains that pose many safety risks to the public. Mr. President, this call for papers is necessary for us 
to try and see through all those issues, as I say, shrouded in mystery, shrouded in secrecy. It's a call for papers that the government should agree with so we can get on scrutinising just, just what's gone wrong with this whole fiasco of the South Korean train purchase. Thank you.